Good morning and welcome to Cardinal Church of the Open Doors, one of the fastest growing churches in all the world for the glory of God. Amen. We thank you for joining us today on our online campus. We know that God is going to have a great word for you today, so just be expectant of that. Whether you're at home, whether you're on your break at work, whether you're in your car, driving, wherever you're at, you're tuning into this broadcast, even if it's a rebroadcast, we know that God has a word for you. So just be expectant to receive God's goodness. Um, just take your, your pen and paper out, write your notes down, get your Bible, and just see what God has for you. Good morning, Open Door Church. Today is a good day to worship our King. Amen. Amen.
God. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Father God, Lord, we are grateful. Heavenly Father God, that you set grace, grace aside for each and every one of us today that we're able, Father God, to see this day. Oh God, I always go back to your word that you said that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I pray today, Father God, that your people, Lord Heavenly Father God, are truly seeking you, Father, with their whole heart, Lord. Because your word says, Lord, that, that when we have sought you with our whole heart, that we will be found of you. Lord, you told us, oh God, that we... Um, you said that your people would perish for the lack of knowledge, God. So I pray today, Father God, that we will gain knowledge, Father God, after we've heard your word, Lord. Father God, you told us that we are to pray without ceasing, Lord. So I, I, I encourage your people today, Father God, that they will pray, Father God. They will come boldly, as your word says, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain your mercy to find grace to help in the time of need, Lord. Father God, that in these crucial times and hours that we're in, Father God, in this world today, Father, as you have, have spoken your word and told us before that in this world that we will have tribulation, Lord. And Father God, for everything that we're going through and everything that we're seeing in this world today, Father God, that we will not take it lightly, Father, that God, we will come boldly unto your throne, Father God. We will pray without ceasing oh God because you said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much Lord Father God put Father God um, um, uh, 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 how can I say that like Father God, like sound uh, 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 a sounding alarm today, Father, in somebody, oh God, that Father God, they will know that this is the time, Father, that we have to pray, Father God, because your, your word says that the days and uh, the times that we're living in, that these days are evil, Father God, and Father God, that we have to see, Father God, we have to know, Father God, that Father God, that this is the time that we have to pray. Father God, prayer, Father God, is direct communication with you, Father. Father God, convince your sons and daughters today, God, that, Father God, we have to pray, oh God. Oh, Father God, your word says, oh God, in Psalm 4, hear me when I call, oh God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. So, Father, I pray if there's someone, Father God, in distress today, Father God, Father, let them remember this scripture, Father God. Let them run boldly, Father God, today, Father God. Let them pray, Father God. You said, ask and we shall receive. Seek you and we will find you. Knock at your door and you'll open it unto us, Lord God. Father, I encourage somebody this morning, Father God, that Father God, they will come, Father, boldly, God, that they will ask, Father God, that they will not be ashamed, Father, that they will not be afraid, Father God, that they will be desperate, Father God. Put desperation of Father God inside of us, Father God. Put a boldness, Father God, inside of each and every one of us today, Lord. Let us come boldly today, Father God, to ask, Father, what Whatever it is that we need, Father God. I know, God, that there is not one person, Father God, listening to this broadcast today, Father, that does not have an issue, Father God. None of us are unscathed, Father God, from the things, oh God, that's going on in this world today, God. Father God, let us, oh God, put a, 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 a earnest, Father God, a, 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 a knowing inside of us that, that Father God, that we, we need you now, God. We need you now now, Father God, that it's high time that we seek you, Father God, that, Father God, that you are the one, Father God, that have the answers for our lives, Father, for our families, God. You are the one, oh, Heavenly Father God, that has that miracle, Father, that has that healing, Father God, that has that medicine, Father, that that person needs to get healed today, Father God. Lord, let them call on to Jesus. Your word says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of of our faith, Lord. Oh, Father, increase somebody's 
faith today, Father, especially after they hear your word, Father God. Father God, let somebody change their life, oh God. Change their life around today, God. Father God, make them know that we, we need you, God, that we are nothing without you, Father God. And God, we just want to tell you today, Lord, that we love you, Lord, with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, Lord. You are mighty, God. You are mighty, Father God. It doesn't matter what the enemy puts in front of us, God. Father God, if we pray, Father, without ceasing, if we believe, Father God, that, that Lord, you are the God, your name is Jehovah Nisi. You are the God who fights our battles, God, and, and God has won the victory already, God. And your mighty right arm, you said, have won you that victory, Father God. Let us believe you and depend on you, Father, and trust in you, Father God. Oh, Father, we trust you today, God. And God, we love you with all our hearts, Lord. In this, I, I say today, God, in your Son, Jesus, powerful, powerful name, I pray this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, watch this. See, understand there's a purpose for your life. And you have, God has commissioned a work for you to do. What works will follow you? Well, we're going to see Jesus, his work. He said, John said, if, if we were to count one by one the work that he did, and you put that in the book, the libraries of the world couldn't contain it. Let that be said about me. Let that be said about you. In the name of Jesus. Wow, glory to God. <laughs> In verse 40, so when they saw him, they were amazed and said, his mother and said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father, which is not his father, that's, that's his stepfather, and I have sought you anxiously. Verse 49, here's the point. This is why I want to, this is why I want to hard in and I'm right here. And he said to them, his mother and father now, why did you seek me? Oh! Come on, he's a boy 12 years old. Are you being disrespected to me? No, he's not. But he understands that, 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 that he knows that he has a work to do and that his works will follow him. He said in John 9, 4, he said, I must do the work of, I must work the works of the one who sent me, my father. Verse 49, and he said to his mother, to his mother and father, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business. I think that's that, to call a phrase, you know, you hear the young people say today, handling the business. <laughs> Jesus handling the business. God wants you to handle your business. He wants me to handle my business. And even though when I slip and fall, I get right back up and I'm back on handling his business. Wow, again. A beautiful prayer. I love our intercessors. I will always say that because prayer is powerful. And I thank you for that powerful prayer. It just went before me. It gets my mind, it gets you ready to, to receive the seed. And the ground is your brain. And so the word is the sword. And it's opening up the ground, our brain, so that the seed, the word of God, can come into your life and that it will bring a harvest. Well, you know what we do always. We uh, speak words of affirmation over ourselves. We are actually to have, a, if you have a smartphone, if you have a Bible, I want you to just lift that Bible up and then repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. My life, is made better from hearing the word of God. For faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that can be found where? You got it. Romans 10, 17. So your faith is going to grow over every trial, every situation that you may find yourself in. I'm teaching a series now of what works will follow you. What works will follow you? What works that you would do that will follow you. And this is the opportunity, the time, I want to just 
give a, a put out a disclaimer that uh, the music that you may feel inappropriate, but this is the time for you to leave and come back within two minutes. But right now, I want you to to listen to the to the lyrics because it is a, a, a demonstration or illustration, I should say, of what I the message I'm trying to bring across to you. But if you're Jesus' first cousin, you may be offended. All right. So let's. Uh, you, you hear, you have, your works will follow you. You have to work, 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 work. Yes, yes. And so this is the thing that we have to do. Jesus says, you have to, uh, Paul said that, uh, uh, Jesus said in John 9, 4, that, that, that he must do the works of the, of the Father that sent him. And so you and I have to do works, because our works will follow us. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes. As we get into the word today, Ecclesiastes chapter four, and I I I, I love that. And that's a the uh, Solomon, one of the wisest men that ever lived. He wrote Proverbs and he wrote Ecclesiastes. And so, if you want to know wisdom, get into the book of Proverbs, get into Ecclesiastes, and and so. This, I know I need wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, verse 7, wisdom is a principal thing, but in all you're getting, get an understanding. I need understanding. You need an understanding. So how you, on how to walk in this world in this 22nd 20, uh, 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 year, 22, 2020-22, on how to walk and so that you will not uh, be, uh, you won't stumble as you, if you're sleepwalking. This message today uh, this series, I should say, was uh, intended to wake you up from out of your sleep so that you can understand and see and hear the Word of God clearly so that you won't stumble. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 105, Thy Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So this Word that we'll be receiving now, because faith come by what? Faith come by what? Yes, Romans 10, 17. It's faith come by hearing the word of God. So you need to have faith to deal with the issues that's in your life today. And I'm excited as we conclude this series, what works will follow you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14 says, For God will bring every, what work? See that word right there? God will bring what? Every work into judgment. See, in other words, you have to stand before God to give an account of the work at the time that He gave the gifts and the time that He gave you to work. You know, He gave us an example as an ant in, in Proverbs 6 6. He said, Look at the ant. They were not, they were not lazy, they were not sluggish. They will walk. They will walk. They will not sleepwalking. And God brought you here this morning to see this, to hear this broadcast, and those who watch the rebroadcast to wake you up, up to reality. It says, "Bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or evil." Huh? There are some some people. Right now, who are working in the church, no one knows what they're doing. It's secret. But God, God knows. And God is going uh, gonna to give them uh, merits for the time that they gave back to God. I said in my, in my previous, previous messages that there's 1,440 uh, minutes in a day. And how much time do you allocate carve off every day a time for God? You will be held to judge it. You will be held a, a, according um, to that. And we saw last week in Hebrews 9, 27 it is appointed every man wants to die then the judgment. Then you stand before God. So we're not going to wait to the last day. I mentioned for, um, for you guys may not like this, this um, 
example I, I gave in the past, and I'm going to give it again. Uh, Denzel Washington won the Academy Award for training, training, training days. Um, and there was his, his, his um, a young rookie on the job with him. And Denzel was a poor example, but this rookie had enough uh, character, enough moral sense to not to do what his superior officer was asking him to do. And I'm looking at that as, a, as to you. You, are, this is your training days. And you're on earth. And you may have people who are older than you, have been spiritual um, uh, in the word longer than you have, but you, they may have veered off. But you know right from wrong. And as you do what you are called to do, the gift and the time that God has given you, it will save your life as to save the young, the young rookie that day. When he could have uh, allowed the young girl, I, I'm not going to go into the movie, but to my point suffice to say that he could allow the young girl that was about, who had skipped school, where she should have been in school, he could allow those two guys to rape her. But he didn't. And consequently, she left her wallet. And when, her, when his superior officer, which is Denzel Washington, was setting him up to die because he did the right thing. His works followed him and saved his life. And I'm saying to you, what you have time to do, do what Jesus said. He told his mother and father, oh, didn't you know? I have an assignment. I have to do the work. And this is a 12-year-old boy. Some of you have been in, 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 in the ministry for, for over 40 years. And God is saying to you, it's time for you to get busy. God is saying to you, everything that you do or don't do will be judged. All right. Let's look. Let's keep going. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7. I think I want to look at Matthew 7. Let's look at verse um, 21. Because see, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, is not going to make it in. And just because you've been in the church for 40 years, and you may have served uh, in the church, but if your heart and your motives is not right, see, God said every secret thing. He's talking about every secret thoughts. Jeremiah 17, 9 said, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God says, I know your thoughts. And I'm going to give you according to your works. Every man according to their doing. You're not going to get by. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatever a man doeth, that shall he receive. And in Genesis 1 says, every seed will bring forth a harvest after its own kind. So it's so important to, uh, I would just say, um, just, uh, take a sidebar on a seed. Uh, oftentimes when you use seed, this talk, we, take, we think of uh, uh, um, um, finances, we think about um, uh, after culturally, but there are all types of seed. And so Jesus said, when he hung on the cross. Now, here's a seat. Get ready for the seat. Father, forgive them, but you know not what they do. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, now, who has crucified you? Who has spoke a lie or the truth that you didn't want to get out because it was embarrassing over you? And you have Bitterness in your heart, and God sees every part of that. He, see, this is what we have to, you have to wake up. See, God is a spirit. John 4 and 4. John 4 24. I'm sorry. John 4 24. Put that down. John 4 24, somebody. 
God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And in verse John 4, 23, the verse before that, said he's looking for true worshipers. Somebody put, here I am, Lord. Just put, here I am, Lord. Put, put, as we get started, here I am, Lord. And then 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro, looking for some here I am, Lord, true worshipers. And when you fall, you fall in shock, you confess to God and say, here I am, Lord. There was a song years ago by James Cleveland, um, old gospel. It's not my, no, no John P. Key. It's not my mother, it's not my father. It's me, O oh Lord, standing at the Lord, at the altar. It's me. I need, I need your blessing. And so we have to come to that mindset that does, but you're not going to do good works by not being honest. And so God has brought you here this morning. As we conclude our series, what works will follow you? And I just pray at the end of this, se of this series that you will change your way of thinking and that you will be woke. You will not be sleepwalking anymore spiritually. So, look at, um, I actually, Matthew 7, 21 said, Not everyone who says to me, this is Jesus, he's speaking to the, in the red. And he's not speaking to unbelievers, he's speaking to believers. Let me say that again. He's not speaking to unbelievers, he's not talking to sinners. <laughs> he's talking about the ones who have said, they have confessed with their mouth and believe in their heart that he died for them. He's talking to believers. Look what he says. This, this is the gospel for you and I. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who do the what? Who do work. You got to do something. He who do, he did. That was a plumbing uh, commercial used to run all the time. Uh, who gonna, um, who's going to unclean your you know, plumber. A D do. <laughs> a shout out to A A D. <laughs> Alright, I just gave you a plug. Okay. But but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Verse 22. Many have said to me in that day, will say to me in that day. See, you understand the given account. You're gonna be judged. What works will follow you? Okay. Outward and inward. I'm going to say that again. What works will follow you? Outward and inward. See, man see the outward, but God sees the inward. He sees both. Uh, write this down in your note take. It's 1 Samuel uh, 16, uh, 7. When, when, when Samuel the prophet came to Jesse's house to anoint the new king, and Jesse had eight sons, but David was the youngest, but when the first three boys came, they were tall and handsome, and 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 man, they got the outward. And Samuel was about to pull the oil upon the older sons, and, and God stopped him twice. He said, "Man, look at the outward, the flesh, but I see the inward." And that's why we need to start to. The only way you can see a person's um, a spirit. You have to be in the spirit yourself, and you have to be spirit-led, and you have to be humble, and you have to die to yourself. Paul said, pick up, I pick up my cross daily. A cross is something that you die. What are you dying to? Then? Is it drinking? Is it smoking marijuana? Is it committing adultery? Straight out or, 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 or fornicating with no remorse whatsoever? Homosexuality? What is it? You have to pick up your cross Daily. Come on. Prideful. Every day you walk up, you, you pride, you put yourself above everyone else. You know, my, the Bible says that uh, in Proverbs 6, 16, the six things that God hates, seven abominations. You know the you know the first three are? Pride. We don't even think of that. God hates that. Number two, a liar. Number three, a killer. In the name of Jesus. So, listen. So God, he says, he says, many will say in that day, 
Lord, Lord, we have, have we not prophesied in your name? See, that's power in the name of Jesus. And so in the next verse it says, have we not cast out demons? Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. And when you're using the name of Jesus properly, they'll know if you spend time with Jesus. They'll, because they watch you, they study you. They see uh, uh, Sunday mornings you don't get up at 10.15. I don't have to. You don't get the you don't get a chance to to watch the live broadcast <laughs> because it's not important enough to you, true worshipers. And, and now we, we have it so easy now. You don't have to put on your clothes and put your Sunday best on and get in the car and drive miles to worship. It is brought to you. Doorstep is brought to your living room. I'm coming to you live, not from not from uh, Times Square, New York. I'm coming to you live from the Open Door Church in Rocco, California, <laughs> with the power of God. And 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 you watch some of you watching the rebroadcast because you didn't feel. Uh, that was important enough to get up and watch. Everything, your time, you're going to stand before God. As I conclude this series, now, and I'm not, I'm not coming to you preaching condemnation. I'm, I'm encouraging you. I love you. I want you to receive all that God has for you. But you're going to have to do your part. Jesus at 12 years old said, well, he told his mother, don't you know? Come on. And then in John 9, 4, he said, I must do the work of the, I must, I must work the works of my Father who sent me to do. What has God has called you to do? He's given you a gift. Are you sitting on that gift or are you multiplying that gift? I'm just asking. I didn't call anyone name out. So look, so let's look at let's let's look at while we're at Matthew chapter seven. Let's stay there, and listen. When you do the will of God, and you do what you're supposed to do, He said, you know, everybody's not going to make it in. Only those who make it in that will do what God has instructed them to do, and to their knowledge. You will not be held responsible for something that you you're not knowledgeable about. So, when you do the will of God, you will build something. And I'm trying to build you up. I'm trying to build your character up. I'm trying to build you up through the word and the knowledge of God. Because Jeremiah 3.15 says, I will give you pastors. I'm a pastor after God's own heart. And they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Ephesians 4.11, I'm giving you a gift. I'm a gift. The fivefold ministry, Ephesians 4 11. Apostle. He had 12 apostles. We, the word apostle means we're not the apostles that was handpicked and chosen by Jesus, but we are apostles now in the sense that the apostle literally means sent one. I've been sent. You've been sent. Will you go? And when you go and do the work. All right. So it says, um, so look at Matthew chapter 7. When you do the will of God and the work of God, you're building your house so that when the, when the, when the thief comes, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes like, well, the thief only comes but to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's coming to your neighborhood. He's coming down Faith Boulevard. It doesn't matter. But, if you, but he's not going to deliver the package that he wants to give to you if you are standing and doing the work and the will of God. He's going to, like in the, when they were in, the, in Egypt. In Egypt, it's a picture of the world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. So when that deaf angel comes to deliver death on your doorstep, he has to pass over. Why? Because Jesus says in Hebrews 13, 8, that he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. That blood that was 
that lamb without a spot of blemish that was uh, prefiguring Jesus Christ. And he's the same today in the Old Testament as he is in the New Testament. When we take communion, when we believe, and when we do the will of the Father. Am I making sense or I'm just jabbing? As a, as a, what's his name, Eminem said? Was it Jabba Jabba? I don't know. He said, y'all know. So now watch this. So when we do the will of God, this is what happens when we do the will of God. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and work, work them. Somebody said work. Somebody put work. Come on, do his work. Come on. Work, 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 work. Come on, put the piano back up. Work, 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 work. You got to work. Those who hear and do them. I will liken him to a wise man. Wisdom is a principal thing, and all you're getting, get an understanding. Who builds his house on a rock. What rock? What rock are you standing on? You're standing on the word of God. That's your rock. Hey, Matthew 4 and 4 said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Come on. That's the rock. That's your rock. This book of the law, Joshua 1 8, this book of the law, this book of the rock should not depart out of your mouth. In it, you should meditate on that rock. Stay on that rock. When you do that, you'll make your ways prosperous and you'll have good success. In the name of Jesus, then you'll have good success. I speak success over you now in every area of your life right now. In 2022, I pray, Father, that you will pour out your spirit on each and every person that's, uh, that has an ear to hear what the spirit is saying. And that, that they will, will come to a realization that they must do the work that you have called them to do before they were ever in their mother's womb. In Jesus' name. Verse 25. And the rain descend, descended, the floods came. See, you got problems. That's what he's saying. You're going to have problems in your life. But when you're building and doing the work of God, you know, Elijah with that, uh, with that ass, the servant, was following Elijah with the J. And he went from, from, from Gilgal to Bethel to um, Gilgal to Bethel to um, Jericho and then Jordan. But each, where, each stage of his journey, he had naysayers, 50 prophets just like him. And was speaking negative things. The Bible says Satan can transform himself as an angel of light. That's because so, so so my point is this is that you're gonna hear negative things, but you got to stay focused. Your ear, your, your antennas have to be tuned up to 94.5 Jesus. Look what it says. And and problems came. Problems are gonna come in your life in different forms. And the winds blew and beat upon the house and it did not fall. Why? Come on. Come on. Why it didn't fall? Why you won't fall? Come on. For it was founded on a rock, which is the word of God. That's why you're here on Sunday morning. That's why you, you pray. That's why you fast. That's why you come in on Mountain Monday, Mountain Moving Mondays on, at 530 prayer. Pop up at 530 prayer with, on Tuesday morning with Pastor Karen. Uh, Wednesday morning, back with me, 5.30 prayer. Hour of power. Back again when Pastor Karen pop up, Thursday morning, 5.30 prayer. And then come back Sunday at 10.15. Why? You have to constantly eat this word. You woke. That's when you woke. And that's when, and, 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 and you see, this is to the church. That means that winds, waves, floods is going to come in your life. Write the scripture down. John 16, 33. In this world, I know, he said, I, 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 no, I always say this. <laughs> I correct myself constantly. Jesus said in John 16, 33, I wrote these things that you may have peace. Shalom. I speak peace over here now. In this world, you're going to have winds, floods, 
is going to come against you, your house, and beat against you in various forms, in various shapes. But if you stand it on the promises of the Word of God, hey, <laughs> rock study, baby, put on a reaper frame for me, oh my, rock study. I know, I know, I know you're religious minded and you say, oh, how does this pastor keep using these, these uh, 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 unorthodox songs in a Christian setting? Just keep living, keep praying. All I want to do is get my point across to you. All right. So you're going to have those things. So, but you have to continue to do the works of God. Even when those things happen bad to you. Let's look at Matthew uh, chapter 25. As we come into a conclusion of this series, I pray that those who have been with us from day one, um, that you have come away with a greater sense of, of awareness of who you are and what God has commissioned and called you to do. That you already see up ahead that there's a uh, training days and that there will be a time of uh, reckoning that when you stand to be judged that you will not, if they put you in a, in a tub, you got to see the movie, I'm sorry, and ready to blow your brains out that they can't do it because your works have followed you. I have to put, I'm sorry, I have to use that, those metaphors to get your attention. And those young people who have seen the movie, you understand what I'm trying to convey to you. Matthew chapter 25. And you know the story. I, I said it in my message earlier. There was a, a Jesus, this is in the red. He, uh, he came and he gave one servant, 10 talents, he gave one five, he gave one one. But the one with the one servant, was, uh, talent and gift, he he buried it. In other words, he didn't use it. I've I've seen people out in the marketplace and they're Christian and they can sing, oh my God, you got a beautiful voice. That voice, if someone heard that voice and come into worship, and they may be depressed. They may they may be thinking about committing suicide. And hear that voice, that gift that God gave you for such a time as this to use. But you, you're setting on, oh no. I, I see one of, one of my members, and I love him to death, Jose. And Jose, when he came to the church, he came with, uh, with the, one of my members, his girlfriend, I'm not gonna call her name out. That's, that's not the point. But, uh, one, one at, 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 at rehearsal, at our praise rehearsal, I heard somebody playing a guitar. And I said, well, who, I asked uh, Darian, I said, I, I, I was in another room writing some notes for a, a midweek Bible set. I said, who's that? Because we didn't have a guitar. Our guitar players come on Sundays. And I'm saying, who, who, who is that? And he said, Jose. I said, Jose who? <laughs> and when I saw, I said, you have that gift. Oh, thank God you're not set on it. God gave you that gift for a reason. And he has blessed, he has blessed those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Do not worship. So, let's look at did I tell you? Um, yeah, the, the, the story. Let's look at Matthew 25, verse 26. We're going to conclude this. But the Lord answered and said to him, talk to the, the one that was afraid. Look, look at verse 25. 25, 25. Let me just take it back. Maybe that gave you a better This is the one that had the one time. And I was afraid, and when I and went and hid, your talent in the ground. The talent God gave him that he was supposed to give and multiply, he put it in the ground. Hmm. Are you putting your talents in the ground? I'm going to ask you that question. And if you so, what works are following you? 
If you put it in the ground, that work, work will not follow you. Because it's in the ground. Look what it said. Look what he said. And I went and hid it. I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have. There you have what is yours. Look, there you have what you yours. Does Jesus still preach? Verse 26. But the Lord answered and said to him, You are wicked and lazy servant. I said the slugger in, in Proverbs 6, 6, the ant is not lazy. Slugger means lazy. Fact check. I God brought somebody here this morning for 2022 so that you can be as Pharrell happy. So that you can be blessed. When you wake up and you realize the direction you've been going is the wrong direction. And now you understand clearly how you ought to conduct yourself and give the talents that God gave you back to him so that you can multiply. Is that making sense to anybody? Say so you're a wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money in the bank. When you say, had, had you put the money in the bank, you would have done, got something out of it. If this you now he's shifting now. If, if this is not, he's like so you can understand. If you're not going to invest the money, if you're not going to invest in cryptocurrency, you're not going to uh, in uh, uh, mutual funds, rock iron, or something, you could have just put it in a bank. You would have got little to nothing, one percent, but you would have got something. And so when you stand before God, God is saying, "You, I want you." to to reap something from me. That's why I invested in you. That's why I gave you the talent. That's why I gave you, uh, DeAndre, the, the abilities to, to have the mindset to work on computers and, 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 and uh, behind the scenes technical things, uh, uh, cameras, and, and even if you didn't know it, you, by trade, you learned it because you have the gift, that God gave you that gift, the ability to learn so that you can give it back to him. So that when you stand before him, there's some works that are following you. As Jesus said, he told his mother, he rebuked his mother and father. <laughs> you only know. Look at Revelation. And we're going to conclude. Revelation chapter 20. Am I boring you guys? Is this making sense? Revelation chapter 20. Oh, wow. I, 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 I may have to go a little bit over because I still want to show you something. I still want to show you. You just have to see this. Okay, just bear with me. Revelation chapter 20. Let's look at verse 12. Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. What you did in life. What did you, so, you know, everything you do is, it, is being recorded? Okay. And the dead was what? Judge according to the works. Your works will follow you. What works will follow you? And by the things which were written in them. What work, when you stand before the books are open before your life, <laughs> what will what will show? What will you have to show for yourself? Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I fought a good fight, I finished my race, 
and I kept the place not laid up for me. He's standing up. I, I'm waiting for my crown. Huh? I'm getting mine. Come on. Somebody put, I want my crown. I want my crown. Yes, I want my crown. I know I'm talking to you, but I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. I want my crown. And let me tell you, there are some times when I don't want to do the work. Can I be honest with you? Huh? I'm sorry. I'm not Superman. I'm, more, I'm a moral man. I have fears, doubts, depression, uh, setback, just like you do. But I choose not to stay there. It's a choice. That's why it says in Romans 12, 3, and, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. How do I renew my mind? Through the word of God. Now, we're going to look at this lady that her works follow her. And I pray that you get an understanding out of it. Uh, have it. Wow. Let's look at, um, as, as we really conclude now, Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Could somebody say, um, teach, Pastor? If, if, I, if I need this, a few people to say teach. That's all. To encourage me. Acts chapter 9. This is a, a lady who works really followed her to the point that when she was dead, it resurrected her. Come on. I God wants to resurrect some 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 things in your life. He wants to give you credit. And when the enemy comes in to kill to steal you, he can't keep you down. Kill your, your dreams. Kill your, your hopes. That's what he wants to do. Kill your joy. Steal your joy. Acts chapter 9. Let's look at verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple's name. Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good what? Works. <laughs> Listen, I want to be full of good works. Put down, I want to be full of good works. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm walking you through this. I want to be full of good works. As we conclude this series, what works will follow you? I want works to follow me of good works. The Bible said she was full of good works. Can somebody say that about you? Can they say that about you, Dignis McCreer? Lisa D. Owens Jackson? Sherry Pendergrass? Adela Parker? Pastor Audrey Jordan? Tracy? Can they say that about you? Come on. Full of good works. Anaya, can they say that about you? Brandy Marshall Brooks, can they say that about you? Helen Marshall, can they say that about you? Pastor Karen, can they say that about you? Come on. This woman, works, was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. Come on. What she did. She did her works. Verse 37, now, Acts 9, 37. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. What has died in your life? You've been working in the house of God. You've been serving. you got good deeds. But it seems like maybe your hope died. Maybe a, a relationship died. Maybe uh, your finances died. Maybe your communication died. I don't know what it is. But God has brought you here today to resurrect whatever dead in your life is going to come to life. I prophesied, I speak it over you now. And when they had washed her, 
they laid her in the upper room, verse 38, Acts 9, 38, and since Lydia was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, Peter was one of the twelve disciples, he saw Jesus do works, and Jesus anointed him to do work, just like Elijah and Elijah. They, once you be with someone long enough, you start picking up their, their character. You start picking up their habits. That's why it's so careful, so important to be careful who you bring into your close circle. If you're hanging around four thieves, pretty soon you'll be the fifth thief. <laughs> if you're hanging around four successful people, pretty soon you'll be the fifth successful people. You're known by the company that you keep. So look, they said, Peter, he's been in the company of Jesus Christ. We have a, a, a dear sister who full of works and deeds. Let's wash her up, get her body ready, and we're going to talk to Peter. Verse 38, since Lydia was Lydia was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him. See, listen, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. See, two two is a number of witnesses. The Bible says in in, in, in uh, Matthew eighteen fifteen, let a thing be established with two or more witnesses. How many spies did Joshua send into the land? Well, Moses sent in 12 spies, but only two came back with a good report. Amos 3 and 3 said, uh, 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 can two walk together unless that be a spirit of agreement? There's something about two. And then you look at your note takers. I know some of you guys are scholars. And, and Luke 10, 19 to Luke 10, 1, Jesus sent out seven disciples, two by two. And when they came back and they, in verse uh, Luke 10, uh, 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 20, they came back, um, oh my God, even the demons, we have powers over the demons. Well, he told you, I've given you powers to train on the heads of suffering and scoffing. They came back, but Jesus rebuked them. Not even rebuked them, he corrected them and said, yeah, you rejoicing that you have powers over the, over the spirits. But you should be rejoicing that your name is written in the book of life. That can do book. The book of doing. You doing, you obey my instruction to go. And you did it. And now you're coming back with a testimony. Am I making this? I, I, you know, I, 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 sometimes I feel like, I'm, am I giving up too much information? Am I? I just want you to get this thing, man, because you're going to be under attack. And so you're going to have to have something solid to stand on. Your faith is in the Word. So they told him, look, Peter, don't delay. Her works, her deeds is up there. And that's why this message, what works will follow you? Or are you lazy? Uh, you're a slugger. I don't want to, I don't want to depress you. I want to lift you up. But I can't lift you up by, by, and by not telling you the truth. Verse 39. Then Peter arose and now see now when Peter heard about this. What? Jose? He's been playing the guitar, been playing in worship? And doing happen behind the scene? What? <laughs> He's in a crisis? <clears throat> I got to show up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show up and show out. <laughs> then Peter rose and went with them. Then he had come. They brought him to the upper room and all the windows shut by, all the, all the, all the windows <laughs> stood by, I'm sorry. I'm reading something that's not even <laughs> Stood by weeping, showing their tunics. 
the, what? What tunics? Things that she had made with her hands. Her deeds, her garments, her works followed her. Which darkness had made while she was with them. What are you doing while you're with Open Door Church? Or whatever church you are at? What are you doing? What do you have to show? <laughs> and that's all I'm trying to, to bring out to you. To, in 2022, get busy. Do something. Verse 40. Peter put them out. And he kneeled down and prayed. See, that's why we open up with prayer. You see how all the different people we have praying? It's, so, it's power in prayer. He put all the, uh, all the maybe looky loos out. That's why you have to be careful. When you go into a trial, you just can't tell your trial to anyone. You want to tell your trial because the winds, as we saw in Matthews, that the winds uh, will, will beat against your building and waves and floods. You need to tell people who are believers. And not your family members. They, they may be your family members, but they, they can't help you because they're not believing. They don't have faith in what you have faith in. Or your best friend. Your best friend should be a believer. Hello. So he kneeled down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. Come on. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Hallelujah. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, all the cries, the, 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 the ones that may be challenging their faith, he presented her alive. God wants to print, present you alive. He wants to bring back some things that are dormant in 2022 because of 2021. And I'm here as a servant of the Most High God to encourage you in 2022, starting this Sunday as we conclude this series, that the works of God will follow you and that you will begin to get busy in the things of God. That's how you build your house in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you and I bless you now. I thank you for this word. I pray, Father, that it will not return to you, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you gave me a word to give to your people, to encourage them, oh God. Lord, that they can... They can do exceeding, according to Ephesians 3, 20, exceedingly, above and above all that they can ask or even dream of. They had to imagine, had to enter in their mind their capability. So I thank you now. And Lord, I just pray that if there's someone watching now or watching the rebroadcast that has not accepted you as Lord and Savior, that they will take this time right now to accept you as Lord and Savior. God, I give them the invitation right now. I'm calling the Romans 10, 9. If they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus Christ died for their sins, they believe that. They believe that, that you, Father, your son was put in a tomb for three days. And after the third day, he rose by your power. They may not can articulate that. They may not can not, may not uh, express how they believe what they believe, but they believe. And if that's you, I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, this message today, for the first time, I have my faith around it. There are talents that I, I am sitting on, I know. But I didn't understand like I understand now. 
Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Because I believe that you raised your son from the dead. So I want to be saved. I want to stand before God and not be called wicked. Help me. If that's you, I want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood that you shared for me. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that if I believe that I was when I die, not if I die, when I die, I will spend eternity with you. Thank you, Father, for washing my sins away. I feel clean, cleansed already. I want to be your servant. I want to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you in Jesus' name. If that's you, I want you to call that number down at the bottom of the screen, 951-245-1777. Call that number right now. Come on, call. Get up. 951. Call that number. 245-1777. And said, I gave, just gave my life to Christ. And we have pastors that will return your call within 24 hours. If you leave your name and, and how, contact on uh, information on how we can contact you prompto and we'll get back with you and they will lead you into uh, 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 instructions on the most important decision that you ever made and we'll give you a brand new body. If that's you, call that number, call it, and we welcome you into the family of God. Amen and amen. Those who are just uh, you're saved, but you know that you've been sitting on your gift. And God has, you heard this message to challenge you. And I decree and I declare now that God will not call you that good, uh, uh, that, that lazy servant. He will say that good and faithful servant in an end. I pray for you now. I pray, Father, that every gift that remain dormant, that you will resurrect it now in Jesus' name, so that as they obey your word, which is your will, they will build a house, emotional house, spiritual house, financial house, that when troubles come, and they will come, it will not be destroyed. I ask you this now, in Jesus' name, amen. Stay. So don't go anywhere. Let's continue to watch the uh, stream. We have some more announcements. We love you. I see you next Sunday morning at 1015. Share and give hearts. I love you. Amen. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want you to know what the word of God says. In, in, in Leviticus 27 and 30, it says, All the tithes of the land whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the trees is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. So you know, guess what? It don't belong to you, okay? God owns all things. All things come from God. We and all that we have belong to him. I don't know if you realize that, but that job you have, he blessed you with that job, but it's still not yours, amen. But, but look what God, look what the Bible tells us. Uh, 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 you talk about steward. A steward is one who manages the money or property belonging to another person. As God's steward, we are accountable to him for the way we manage, okay, our, our finances, okay? He entrusted us to handle this money, okay? So uh, um, the purpose of the time was to remind the people of God, ownership of all things and to teach them to put God first in their lives. God is exceedingly generous. He allowed them to keep 90, okay, 99, 90%, okay, and the rest of it, the 
said, go to the Lord. But he didn't try to keep it all. He, he's saying that all I want you to do, if you're a good steward of what God has blessed you with, because on your job, he's blessed you to earn those monies. And he's saying he just wants 10% and you keep the 90%. Okay, Deuteronomy 10, 14 says, Behold, the heavens and the heavens of the heavens is the Lord, thou God, the earth also, and with all therein. So everything belongs to God. That's all he asks you is to give 10% to him. Amen? That's not, it, it, it seems like uh, uh, to give difficult for some, but start off there. If you don't have, uh, if you difficult for you to start there, start somewhere tidy something. Amen? But the, the, the Bible tells us to do 10%. Amen? Because number one, what you have is not yours anyway. It belongs to God. He blessed you. And, and don't think that it's all you because you're on that job. God bless you on that job, and he wants you to give 10% back to the Lord. Amen. Now it's time to give. Take a look at the screen. Wow, I hope you guys enjoyed the message today. It was amazing and a pleasure to have you and serve you today. I can't wait for you guys to join us next week. I'm just here to remind you to please share the broadcast with your friends and family. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And again, come back and join us next week. We can't wait to have you. And for the women out there, I'm just here to remind you, we have our special women's conference, September 24th to the 28th. You don't want to miss it. It's amazing. It's going to be packed with good food, good messages, speakers. It's, it's just all out going to be a good time. And you know Pastor Karen, she's going to just blow it out of the water. Water. She is always so good with all of her events, so you're going to be amazed. So please register online at the church's website. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to give us a call at the church office and we will answer those questions for you. I also want to remind you to join us tomorrow with Pastor Fred and on Wednesday as well with Pastor Fred for the morning prayers that he does. He will go live and please just join so that you can submit your prayer requests. Join us in prayer so that we're in unison praying for one another and uplifting one another. And also don't forget that Pastor Karen does her lives as well on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And those are amazing. You guys are going to be blessed. The word is just flowing out of her. And I just catch myself writing and writing and running out of space. So you're going to get all these amazing goodies from there. And you know Pastor Fred and Pastor Karen pour their heart into their teachings and their studies. And it's amazing. So invite a friend, share the link, and we cannot wait to see you again next week. Thank you and have a great day.